recording and uh hey jamie andy how's your thursday ah good good thanks scott appreciate it hi jamie how are you andy scott how's it going everybody all right and all right. uh welcome we got looks like we got a great crowd out there today thank you for taking time out of your afternoon to come to the trading studio my name is andy i'm joined with jamie here and of course, uh, Scott is always manning the operation, but uh, we are going to take you through the next hour, uh, maybe 45 minutes to 50 minutes or something like that, uh, talking about uh, software and uh, got some good stuff on the agenda today. I think, uh, I think a lot of you are gonna like it. So let's just dive in. And first, let's go over the disclaimer. Guys, we are con educational purposes only. All right, nothing that you see or hear today should be construed as investment advice, but uh, we are gonna be having some fun talking about some concepts and looking at some stocks and things like that. But once again, if you are seeking investment advice, look for somebody who is licensed. That would be a stockbroker or an RIA uh, registered investment advisor. All right, let's dive in and talk about our support, education and training, because we always have new people in here. And I want to let them know that it is a very powerful software, okay? It can do uh, some incredible stuff, uh, limited only by your imagination. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but at the same time, you know, it's, it takes a little bit of time to get used to. Now, that doesn't mean you can't come in here and have access to some incredible windows right away. We provide you with tons of windows that you can immediately pull up and start using. Uh, eventually, though, you're going to want to customize it and, and make windows for yourself, and it, it's it's amazing what you can do with it. So we're here to help, and the way we do that is we have these afternoon webinars. Okay, they are inter we encourage interaction. Uh, they're every Monday through Thursday at five Eastern time. Uh, it's usually myself, Jamie, or Steve. We're kind of coupled up, and uh, one guy will be the the, the main uh, presenter, and the other guy will pitch in where he needs to. Uh, and then on Wednesday, we do have our CEO, Dan Merkin, and our CFO, uh, be, that would be a CTO, I'm sorry, Brad Williams. And uh, that's a great hangout to come for, for Q&A and to, to see new versions that's possibly coming, coming around the bend, uh, coming to a computer near you. So these are, and, and let's not forget the traders room, okay? That's another great place to go for not only to look and watch and listen to great traders making live trades but you also are able to see the software and they uh very will answer any questions that you might have about the software of course after you know maybe the first couple of hours when he does kind of stick to his trading and things like that but he's uh, he's always welcomes questions in there and guys this, this is huge the support webinar you see at the bottom this is every monday and friday at 12 OK, if you have any questions, let's say you just joined up and you're thinking, gosh, I wish I knew how to do this. I wish I knew to do that. I'm going to send them an email. This is the best venue for that. OK, the reason it is, is because we open up. It's a live stream so you can see our desktop. You can ask a question and we can show you how to do it in the software. It's so much easier than trying to show you by answering an email. OK, because you do not have a visual. Uh, so please, if you have some questions pertaining to uh, alert configuration or just software questions in general, be sure to, if you can make it to these 12 o'clock uh, Eastern time, uh, Monday through Friday support webinars, that's a, that's a place you want to do it. All right, I want to talk a little bit about the uh, simulated trading here at uh, Trade Ideas. We do have uh, a paper trader, people like to call it, uh, and what this is, it's a interface okay it's a little module that you can pull up and you can paper trade on it and you can day trade on it you can swing trade on it you can do anything you want to as far as trading goes on it uh, you do not need a broker connection uh, you do not need to fund an account okay we have it all right here you will need a subscription but other than that uh, it's man it, you know it's it's very important especially for new traders to get on a paper trader and do that for a while until you get a good feel of, of, of the markets and how price action acts and uh, uh, you just don't want to dive straight into live trading. All right, let's look at the agenda for today. We're going to go over the market recap, a uh, little bounce there in the S&P there in the uh, 
the, in the closing uh, minutes of the day, uh, I'd say the last 45 minutes maybe. Uh, then I'm going to talk to Holly. I mean, Jamie's going to take over and talk about Holly recap. Great trade in there. He'll be dissecting that one for you uh, and maybe another one. Uh, and then I'm going to talk something I think a lot of you guys probably want to listen to. Uh, it's about uh, a concept that Steve and I used to use at Today Trader uh, years ago. It's called swing scalping. Uh, it's a great alternative to day trading. It's kind of a hybrid between day trading and swing trading. Uh, in my mind, uh, it's far less stress. And I really believe it's a style that most traders should consider, uh, especially people coming in uh, and wanting to just day trade, go to where the action is. Uh, I don't want to steer you away from day trading, but I just know through my experience of 23 years of trading, 17 of it, which was de pure day trading, that most traders, I, I think, are probably uh, more suited for uh, this style called swing scalping. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about that, show you some examples of how you can you can make some decent money, even with a limited account. All right. So let's back out, pull up the old spy, and let's talk about the market here. All righty. Big spy chart there. Well, uh, I, so once again, the longs, uh, some bear, long, uh, some bulls were getting a little bit nervous today uh, in the action. We did go down and touch our 200-day, which, by the way, is turning into a long, flat line, okay? So that means over the long term, we've really uh, done a lot of up and down and all around and haven't really gone anywhere, okay, versus when you start seeing this flattening 200-day. Uh, we did test it today it looked like we were about to go down and test it again but lo and behold if i pull up the 15 minute chart you can see there i guess the last hour of the day we did have a little nice little rally in the market to save face and actually finish up positive on the day we are below our 10 period and our 20 period still but uh you know i think a break below this level and uh, especially if we get you know Let's just draw a little line here, make it a little bit easier. Actually, you can see my uh, alert there that I have set. But yeah, if we get below this level and below this 50, things could get a little hairy, a little dicey there. But uh, for right now, we did bounce again off that 200 day. We haven't closed since this drop down. I guess we closed right at it there, but we haven't closed below it, not significantly anyway. I don't, I don't, it's close on that day, but other than that, we've we've held it. Uh, and we held it yesterday and we held it again today. So let's, the bulls will hope we can build off this and get back above this 10 and 20 period. But right now we're kind of uh, kind of in a range, which, you know, I can, you can just use the 200 day as the low end of that range. And this one up here, we're kind of right in the middle of it. So, you know, that's, uh, that's kind of where we are. Uh, I have to wait and see. I, you know, I don't think it's a time uh, that you get too bullish or too bearish. You kind of wait and see. You let the, two forces battle it out and then you jump on the winning side uh all right the cues i'm going to pull them up real quick and take a look same picture there except you don't nowhere near the 200 day on that one uh uh honestly i'm getting i'm getting to where i don't even like to look at the cues i, I mean because it's really it's it's five stocks and and a few strong semiconductors uh, that kind of uh push this around uh and i just don't like i don't think it's you know weighted I mean, it's great. If you want to buy that index, I think it's a great one to buy because you're buying, you know, 45% of the uh, the index is, you know, five of your major stocks is Apple, Amazon, Google, Facebook, and Netflix, I think's in there. But uh, I'm sure I'm missing one. But anyway, uh, that's all I'm going to look at today, Jamie. I'm not going to sit here and dive into too many all of them iwm and dow we can just kind of i kind of like to focus on the spies to be honest with you anything you want to add there no i'm pretty much in agreement with you on that i mean yeah the cues i mean sure all-time highs recently pecked but uh you know when you're talking about that small handful of stocks and those companies happen to be the ones that really aren't that adversely affected by current macro mm -hmm. conditions and eh, you're like well okay <laughs> right. You know, yeah. the S&P being 500 stocks is, a, is just a more accurate uh, it is. It uh, is depiction of what's really going right. on in the market. Mm -hmm. All, All right, right. Jamie. I'll tell you what. Yeah, yeah we got some 
nice things to show in Holly today. Yeah. I have the I can make my fingers operate here. There we go. And we should be up. Okay. Oh, it was up. there it is. Yeah, there we go. Okay, cool. All right. Well, as everybody can see here, I've got the all trades blotter up for Holly. Of course, if we look over here on the channel bar, we can see the trade count. Just add them up real quick. We had a total of 14 from the three respective modules here. Um, of course, we can see down here, Neo was the big winner. And keep in mind that these totals that you're seeing over here, 30 bucks, $1.92, 426, these numbers are reflective of doing 100 shares per trade and of course do not account for slippage. Um, the numbers that we're gonna be reviewing down here on my all trades blotter are going to be reflective of the way I have my risk parameters set up in my AI trade size. And we can see down here, obviously we can use dollars or shares per trade, but I have selected $100 risk per trade. And then the system will size me up accordingly as far as the shares go uh, that are needed for that type of stop loss. Um, so what I've done here is I've sorted the blotter by moderate profit and you can see, boom, the cream or the green cream here, it rises right to the top here. And we've got some pretty stellar winners to take a look at here. But I tell you what, we're gonna save the best for last because if you notice right here, we're looking at conservative profit and we're gonna be looking at the difference between conservative and moderate profit, predominantly the spread that has emerged as the day went on between conservative profit and moderate profit um, and how we can attempt during the day as this is all unfolding um, to make a decision to try and get some of this spread here. But first we're gonna talk about another type of I guess trade, for lack of a better term here, uh, that we can focus on when Holly is doing her thing. Um, and that is called a trade around, all right? So we're gonna take a look at this one down here, TBIO, right here. Get my pointer back here. Tell you what, let me just scoot that over a little bit for easy access, there we go. So we're gonna be looking at TBIO. Now, let's look at the reason that Holly closed the trade out right here in profit save. And by the way, all of these conditions that you see over here, obviously this is the conservative exit reason. There are five reasons why the AI will close out a trade in conservative mode. Stop loss gets hit, profit target gets hit, timed hold expires. And then as you can see here, it has the ability to close a loser or a winner early in the form of reduced risk and profit save. So that's what happened in this TBIO trade here. And when we take a look here, uh, let's see. Go to 15 on this one, give me a second. All right, so stock takes a little downturn here. We get the buy signal right there at 23.77 and get a little bit of a lift. And then keep in mind here what we see with the green line. We see the 10 period fast line just couldn't reclaim that level. Takes a little uh, header down here over the next 45 minutes and boom. Uh, actually, the uh, AI made a pretty good exit call right here, okay? Because if you notice right here, it flatted the trade. Just like you or I would do sometimes. Hey, it's not working, I'm wrong, I'm just gonna go ahead and flat it, maybe avoid uh, getting that stop out. And of course, that's exactly what ended up happening here. It came down here and tickled uh, the stop loss area. Of course, the profit save had already been uh, used. That's why we're not seeing a stop out there. But these stop outs or these areas that the stops occur at, can act as pivot points sometimes. So before we go on to talk about this one, I just wanna point out some of the other ones that didn't go this way because it makes your decision easy. If they hover around the stop area, it's probably worth paying attention to. But if we take a look at some of these other ones, it never did. Like for example, uh, let's see, uh, on this one right here. Um, actually, the VIAC did hover around uh, the stop area. Uh, but clearly here, if we take a look at NXST, once that stop area was violated right here, well, did we see it ebbing and flowing right here around the stop area? No, it went well below it and stayed well below it, all right? So it's the ones that are kind of sticking right at the stop area that are the ones that you're gonna pay attention to in the future when you see these stop outs occurring because the ones that stick to it and put in a certain candle pattern like the one on TBIO, 
those are the ones that might have a chance of gaining some ground back here. So let me just trash those lines there. So check out what TBIO did. Once we got to the stop area over here, come on, expand for me. Stop out, come down here briefly, go below it right here. And then we got this nice little doji close on the 15 minute candle. All right, so wick down, doji close, sellers tried to take control, couldn't do it. And then we pop right back up to that stop area. So after we see this candle right here form, could have easily made an entry uh, right around the stop area. Number one, we get a better price than what the AI has, and we can take a lower risk by using the bottom of that candle there. And then we get a nice little lift, not only back up to the entry point, but then a little grind higher after that for the remainder of the day. So this is a classic example of seeing the AI close a trade out, paying attention to it, seeing how it reacts around the stop area, and then making a you know well-informed decision based on how it acts around the stop area. If it craters on through the stop area, well then, hey, it's not worth paying any attention to, and it's probably gonna head lower uh, like a lot of these other ones did today, but this one is the exception. All right, puts in the nice doji, reclaims the stop area, never really looks back there. So that was a great example of a trade around in the TBIO. And now let's get on to the juicier stuff here. Okay, so when we're looking at conservative and moderate spread, usually we don't see them quite this big. Let's look at BAX. Well, that one's the prettiest. Let's look at the juiciest one first. And this was in the BXRT today. And man, right off the bat, this signal was pretty early. As we can see over here, just about five minutes and 17 seconds into the open. And we got this nice entry right here at $3.75. And these are the immediate gratification trades that everybody likes so much. A lot of the times we'll see the Holly trades kind of zigzag, ebb and flow around the entry line, and then they'll make a move. Other times they do this. So we can see in the next 45 minutes after the entry signal, we marched all the way up to this level here, about 501 from a 375 entry not too shabby okay of course when a stock like this is in play and we can see how this one finished today uh, as far as volume goes kicking out almost 30 times on the relative volume that's always a good sign it was high all day take a little pullback here but just keep in mind right here at this level we're still up considerably from 375 to 441 uh, stock kind of goes to sleep for the remainder of the day but you can see the line that I've drawn right here. If we're in it, we were up nicely, never even pulled back, got anywhere close to the entry line. And the exit for Holly, a profit save, not bad. We can see the exit price here, 450, uh, pretty much at the bottom of that candle, so not the most timely exit. Um, but all we had to do is make the decision to stay in it or close it out with Holly. Of course, if you're not sure, we do the old 50-50 methodology. All right, big winner up huge on a percentage basis, 20% at the time of the conservative exit right here. Hey, peel off half, set a break even stop for the other half, would have kept you in it for the remainder of the day uh, for the final push uh, going into the close. And if you did that, you're looking at almost 70% going into the close. Now, in addition to this beautiful setup and the nice movement and the nice behavior of the stock, check out the line right here and you know a nice little range break so if we were already in it maybe we'd peeled off a half we're enjoying the rest of the position as it motors on up here breaks that plane that would have been an excellent time to go back into some or if you kept the whole lot maybe tack on another you know 50 percent or 100 percent on that position because it's such a clean break we got the 10 period uh doing its thing here and we got the massive volume as well um so a lot of opportunity whether it was the original signal or adding to it over here. Um, just a beautiful trade all the way around a VXRT. And of course, VXRT is what kind of stock? Well, you guessed, uh, biotechs, all right? Ever since the corona thing has hit, these little biotech stocks have been coming out of the woodwork. Probably won't expect to see that stop anytime soon, all right? That is, uh, it's what's in vogue right now. It's what's popular. So, uh, you know, a lot of other ones out there to uh, to examine. 
All right, Andy, any questions I need to address right here before I move on to the other beautiful trade uh, that Holly kicked out today? Just let me know. Bax, big company, all right? Big cap company, 42 billion in market cap on the BAX. And me, oh my, what a nice little trade on this one as well. Now, in the second 15 minute candle or about 30 minutes in is when this one triggered. I'm gonna go ahead and do something I don't do very often and just kind of look at the five minute candles here because when this one came out we'd already had a nice little consolidation area for about one two three four five six okay so about 30 minutes into the open which is a very popular opening range time frame you know you got the 15s the 30s and the 60s on the opening range breakout um, this one came a little premature all right so that entry at 882 is short of the high that had been put in which I really like it when I see these. Number one, we've got statistical probability on our side when Holly brings it to our attention right there. And then look, you know, it's kind of, let me just stretch this out a little bit more because it's a little hard to see. Get a little bit more detail on these candles here. All right, now, there we go. Okay, so five minute candles, 30 minutes in, right before that range break, we get the signal. Holly's tell, bringing it to us with statistical probability on our side and a potential auxiliary pattern about to crack off right on top of it. And look what it did right after that, all right? Breaks that plane and just moves higher for the rest of the day. Um, just nice, tame movement. Once again, the 10 period in control for the remainder of the session, uh, giving us confidence. And, you know, for Baxter, a big cap stock, didn't just knock it out of the park volume-wise, but did have a nice finish of 67% above normal. So just to recap here, we got the statistical probability on our side, followed up by the range break right here. Would have been an excellent time to add to that position. And we even get one more opportunity uh, to do that as the stock trades sideways for a good while here, and then breaks that plane once again for just a nice little steady stair step up. So not near as big as a percentage uh, of the day, uh, or excuse me, as VXRT had on the day, uh, but still a nice money-making opportunity, a uh, big spread between conservative profit and moderate. And once again, Holly called it on the profit save, getting out right about in this area right here. All we had to do is make the decision to stay in it because it was strong all day, never really was a reason to get out. Um, so a couple of beautiful examples of how to potentially extract some of that conservative moderate profit spread and a decent example of a trade around in the TBIO, Andy. Um, any right. other symbols you'd like to touch base on well, here before I kick it back to well, you? Well, I, I think uh, uh, NS has a question, uh, or I'm sorry, Mark uh, has a question. What dictates if Holly takes conservative, moderate, or aggressive modes? Maybe just explain the the man and machine type, you know, or. Yeah, idea. and that's a good question. It can be a little bit confusing. <clears throat> that's why we display, you know, if you notice up here, you've got access to all modes okay now the ai is always going to engage in conservative exits because it's a rule set five different reasons why uh, the trade will be closed profit targets hit stop losses hit the timed hold expires and it covers uh, or it initiates reduced risk and profit save so stop loss and profit target and timed hold those are pretty mechanical we know that if these things occur the trade will be closed using traditional risk management. Uh, the profit save and the reduced risk are more like a modified type of trailing stop. If the stock stops going in the direction for a period of time that it should be up on a long, down on a short, uh, the more time passes, the more the AI is likely to kick in one of the audibles here in the form of profit save and reduced risk, okay? Now, you're gonna see every risk mode tracked each and every day just so you have an idea of what's happening in each risk mode. Whereas moderate profit mode doesn't pay attention to the uh, profit save and the reduced risk. It just puts a time, or excuse me, a, a stop loss out there. If the stop gets hit, then the trade freezes, as we can see down here, like on KBH, um, and then only aggressive adjusts. Because aggressive, pro uh, aggressive profit is simply showing you what would have happened or what happens if you buy or sell the stock, whether it's a long or short, and you don't use any risk management. You know, if you're just holding until the end of the day there, all right? Um, so those are the three different risk modes, and Holly is always going to trade in all three modes, 
so that we can track them because once you spend enough time with Holly, once you have enough sessions under your belt, you'll start to notice correlations between A, what is the overall market doing? Are we consistently going up? Is it a kind of a choppy day like today started out and then we run at the end? Um, you'll start to notice correlations between certain uh, characteristics of how the market's behaving and that's going to clue you in as to what uh, uh, risk mode uh, you should pay attention to. But for all practical reasons, we're going to show you performance in all risk modes every day um, because that's valuable information. So I kind of hope that illuminates the topic a little bit here. Yeah, thanks, Jamie. I'm sorry, got a, got a lot of questions piling in here. Let's see, yeah, uh, yeah, no worries. And yeah. you know what? Um, I want to say that KBH was a decent little trade around. Getting that confused with something else today. Let me just pull it pull it up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. KBH was also a good one because this one was a short sell. Okay, and of course we're looking at five minute candles here again. But once uh, once that one got stopped out and look, you know, in this little jumbled up area right here, look how it hugged that stop area for the remainder of the day, and then finally it gave up the ghost right here. Okay. So once you see something like this, and of course this is a short versus a long, but man, once you see something riding that stop area like that, you know, you know, even if it's right here, you know, we take that high wick right there and go a couple of pennies outside. These are the times when you see something like this consolidating right at that stop area. You can take some pretty small risks, you know, um, and get, you know, some pretty decent size in these things. And if you get stopped out, it's no big deal because your risk was small. You're getting a better price than the AI. And then you will get some of these peel-offs like what we saw in KBH, right? So once again, the trade ended up doing what we thought or hoped it would based on the strategy. Timing was off. Sometimes the timing is off, but the statistical probability is good for the day always. All right. Good job, Jamie. Uh, yeah, and most of you guys, I, I see a lot of questions pertaining to Holly. I, in, in a couple of my answers, uh, replies in there, I've dropped a video uh, 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 showing you the Holly. It's probably, I don't know, maybe a five, six minute video, uh, kind of just an overview of Holly. Also dropped a video for those of you who may be interested in auto trading. You do have to have an interactive broker's account at this time. Uh, that is what our brokerage plus hooks up to we are in talks with other um, uh, brokers at this time but right now it's only with interactive brokers and also dropped a video on how you would connect but you're probably getting the cart before the horse if you watch that one you probably just need to watch that last one i dropped to steven in there just a quick overview of the holly and uh, how it works and you'll understand more about uh, uh, the different levels of risk and all that as far as the conservative moderate and aggressive goes all right, Amy, I'm going to kick it back over to you, right. and I, I apologize, like, NS has a question, but since I can't enlarge my questions field, the question is cut off for some reason. Um, I don't know what's going on with yeah, the what you mean. It's, it's go to webinars freaking yeah. out on us. Okay. All right, guys, so uh, yeah, Jamie could still probably, he could probably ask, answer some more AI questions if you had them. I do have some other uh content for today so we gotta we gotta get moving on as far as uh the webinar goes but i wanted to talk today about uh like i mentioned uh swing scalping and let me just bring up my uh and, and how it's an, a good alternative to day trading it's less stressful and how why i think a lot of traders uh, could, should consider uh this concept and it's weird, I, would, I, I, just, I was thinking over here, I said, well, let me go see if I have an old document back when Steve and I had Today Trader, which would have been, oh gosh, probably, uh, this would have been probably, yeah, over 10 years ago. So, and I did find this one right here. And um, uh, we, we had a, a an account, uh, a brokerage account uh, with Ditto Trade and people could uh, attach their trade to ours. Uh, and this is where we kind of introduced our swing scalping method. Uh, we did this for over 40 months, was up 83% uh, uh, documented. Uh, and what it is, is a great explanation right here. It's kind of low risk, high rewards. We looked for these certain setups. Uh, and then the method is to, uh, you know, capture what we call the meat of the move. Okay. Let me pull up my, uh, capture the meat of the move uh, with an average hold time of about three days. 
So our theory was we look for these setups and we ride that wave for about three days, okay? And then we'll jump off and look for the next wave. Uh, and, and in most cases, we only had about four trades, maybe five at a time going. Uh, this is not a style where you want a, a whole water full of stuff. Uh, and because of that reason, uh, you can, if even if you have maybe a $20,000 account, uh, and you're thinking, well, the only way I'm going to be able to make any money is by day trading, just, you know, and getting my leverage. Well, you need $25,000 per day account to, to a day trade, obviously, because of the pattern day trading rule. But this is this is a way, and I'm going to show you a few trades here, and it's a good, some good examples uh, of what I'm talking about. And I want you to think of it like this, guys. If you have a... Um, because here's what I see the problem with a lot of traders that come in, and, and trust me, I've been around for a long time, so I, I have I have seen a lot. So, uh, uh, a lot of traders they come in, they they, they want to jump in these stocks, uh, they they're looking for uh, momentum, and they're going to jump in and give themselves a 10 cent downside and try to make uh, 30 or 40 cents to the upside. If you're really good, uh, that can be profitable, but it's just a very tough racket. And a lot of it's because of high frequency trading. And if you come in here thinking you're gonna be able to use 10 cent stops, uh, you're, you're gonna be run out really quick because uh, they're gonna get you. And uh, I try to teach people, if you are going to learn to day trade, you're gonna be better off looking for those three to four hour moves versus those three to four minute moves, okay? so. I'm just going to give you an example, and, and this is another thing I want to talk about. Okay, this this is my favorite alert, this extreme volume high-low pro, okay, because it's looking for stocks doing huge volume, and it's breaking out of ranges. Uh, in a lot of cases, you, times you're going to look at it, and you're going to think, oh, gosh, that stock's already taken off, and really it's just getting started. So here's what we're going to do. Since this is a multi-strategy window, it's, it's kind of wonky going back in history, so I'm going to pop out my... Uh, Extreme volume, uh, the, the, this is the long side. Uh, the, this is for, for stocks going down. So I'm going to pop this one out right here. Just open alert window. Okay. Let me go ahead and text headers so we can see what we're looking at here. I, I don't know. I hate those icons. All right. So now we popped out this one from my extreme volume. And I'm going to give you exa several examples here of why when you see stocks that are up maybe – you know, 10% on the day and doing huge volume that they're only for day trading, okay? Some of the best swing trades are from stocks that are just ripping and already up 10%. And so what we're going to do here, just go back in and, and, and think about it. We're look, we're talking of the spies right now. You know, the queues are kind of hanging out near all-time highs, but the market hasn't been ripping to all-time highs. Uh, and obviously, there's some biotechs running, but we're going we're gonna to take a look at several stocks here. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you ex some ideas about how you can trade this, even with a small account, and how you can make some, some pretty good money. And, and not only that, you're building your account up. And you're not trading, you know, 10 round trips, 15, 20 round trips a day and beating yourself up and sitting there watching every tick and every level two that moves. And it, that's, it's, a it's really a tough game, and it's hard, and it runs so many people out of the market. So I'm going to show you something that's a lot stressful. Let's go in history right here. We're going to go to history, uh, and we are going to go to – let's go back to Monday, okay, this, and see what's coming through this extreme volume high-low. And, and I'm telling you, you can find this stuff every week unless you're just in a, just a horrible bear market, and then you don't want to be buying a bunch of stuff anyway. But let's go back to uh, – got to put the uh, – oh, uh, sorry, the uh, newest on top. So let's go back to – Monday's the 22nd, and that, that date works right there. And let's go to Monday the 22nd, and we are going to put it on uh, 8 o'clock and just hit OK, and we're going to run through these. Now, I've already kind of looked through these, and we're kind of I, I, just to spare some time, I can't look at every one of these that came through. Uh, we will look at some others, and I'll give you some reasons of why, you know, I might take something and why I might pass on something. Kind of give us a little. All right, so let's go back to uh, 
there's more available. So there's uh, never mind. It's it's 830 in the morning. I don't see need to see the ones that came out in the first five minutes of the day. As a matter of fact, what I usually do is scroll up because I don't like trading the first 15, 20 minutes of the day. OK, I, I you you think you're going to miss some stuff. But trust me, in the long run, if you will just hold off for about 20 minutes, use that time to watch to see which stocks keep hitting highs over and over. Observe the market. Uh, and then uh, at 857, let's say, yeah, let's take a look at this in K. All right. So we're on this day right here. So what are we seeing here? Okay, we already see just by looking at a few months that this thing is breaking out of a multi, you know, month range. Okay, look at the volume coming in. We see huge volume. We see, uh, get my little pen here. We see relative volume. Let's see, where is relative volume? I'm, oh, there it is. Relative volume's up to five. Uh, huge volume. You can see that it keeps going up too. The relative volume as this thing keeps going through. So volume just keeps coming in and in and in again. And the main thing, guys, is look at these daily charts. Okay, you can see what's happening here. This is going back to almost a year high. You have a stock on a major breakout here, multi-year high. The volume is huge, and I promise you. People were buying this, but the most of them were day traders jumping in, taking 20 cents here, maybe 15 cents here. When in reality, if you're trading, let's say a $20,000 account and you put $300 to work, you know, not 300, but maybe bought 300 shares, you know, you're talking about, uh, what is that? Uh, is that 30,000? Maybe you'd have to buy 200 shares. I'll let you guys do the math. You know, maybe maybe put a quarter of your uh, your trading account in it because you're going to get two to one leverage anyway. So even if you have a twenty thousand dollar account, you're you're going to get forty thousand leverage. So let's say you put fifteen percent of your account in this this trade right here, and instead of just looking to just bang out, uh, hold on here, let me get back on my. There we go. Uh, you know, bang out 10 or 15 cents. You can ride this thing up for two or three days. And I'm going to show you some more examples here. OK, let's scroll up. Some of them. You know, they're, they're not going to work now that this one right here, if I see this one coming through and. You know, I could I could give I could give a reason why somebody may take this trade on this day. I mean, it held up that day, but you would have to get out on the next day because it didn't work. And and that's a lot of the time it's just a uh, uh, box. Actually, this is one that I'm looking for uh, continuation. See, this one worked that day. OK, now, if you're swing scalping and you bought it right in here, you're pretty much just flat. This trade's still intact. You can see I have an alert in this. If it goes back through tomorrow's high, this is one I'm going to be watching right here. Still would be alive in something like that, but it didn't probably do what I expected it to do. But still, you'd still be alive. Uh, let's go here to some other ones. I got to pick up some time. I'd like to I wanted to look through uh, some more of these, but we had so many. Uh, a great one right there look at that there's another one right there you see it it's breaking out okay when you saw it there it was breaking out of this range right here it gapped above this pivot level right here and there wasn't really anything till way up here so i don't mind that this thing doesn't have to be breaking out of a, a 52 week high all the time i just want to make sure there's no major resistance you know if i'm buying it and when i see huge volume like this at the time this thing was doing uh 30 times normal one minute volume, uh, 12 times normal five minute volume. That is just more reason for me to stay with the trade. And you can see here, you got nice little two days here. It's still intact. Maybe if you tried, you know, my theory was if I got a certain percentage, I'd always bang out half and let the other half run. But nonetheless, you can see it's still an incredible two day move there from basically, let's say you got it at 22 to almost 30. So that's 30% move. All right, let me see uh, see what else we have on here. There's that one over and over and over again as you see it coming through. And of course, I could show you some ones uh, that didn't work in here. But guys, it's all about you know managing risk. And I wish I had times to you know go through all of these. Like this is a great example of one that I would probably pass on. Okay. 
it's coming through. It's doing huge volume. But look at this mess over here. And look at the way this thing has traded, you know, over the last, you know, some things you just got to leave. You got to leave it alone. There's that one other I wanted to see in here. I think it was Workhorse. There it is. Right there. Look at the move this one had. Okay. Once again, let's take a look. What's happening over here? Wow. Breaking out of a major major high right there and you can see it right there and look at the follow through this thing has all right i'm going to move on to the next day since we're running out of time so we're going to go to history again go to time frame and we'll go to the 23rd which would be tuesday and See if it's gonna load more more available. Let's see. Yeah, let's go ahead and hit more to see the rest. Now the, some of these were follow throughs from uh, a prior day. Now here's yeah, here's the one. Here, here's the beautiful one right here. I know. Okay, you're watching this. And this thing, if you look at this thing, it's not gonna be Fitting through crazy like this extreme master blaster it has five strategies in it you're going to be able to see these things come through and here's i know what a beautiful trade that was look at this breakout right here okay right there first of all it broke out of this level right there and then went and broke out of that one even if you waited for it to break out of this one you still would have gotten uh, a huge move and look at that somehow it's like trading up in after hours to 35 or something like that now, honestly, these biotechs have fun with them. You can catch some big moves in it. I'm not telling you to go out and hold biotechs, okay, because that can be very dangerous. Not all of these were biotechs. Some of them, some of them were, some of them wasn't. I'll take another look at the at one right here. Plugs, obviously not a biotech on this day. Right after that one came through, you got now that's not my buy signal, but this is one. Look what else you have here. You have a gap and go right there breaking out of a double top gaps up and look at the two-day move you had there on that thing so when you see these kind of moves guys associated with huge volume I, I know a lot of people want to day trade but trust me the people that make the big money they're there to the point where they're bearing, you know buying big size and you know holding it for two or three days um, I just want to let you know that there there's another style there is one other one I wanted to show in here let's see 904, I believe it was. And there's some other ones in here. I just don't have time to go through them all, so I'm just kind of picking out the, the really good ones. There's that TBIO that uh, Holly called out today, which would have been on this day right here, that if you bought it, you still had another follow-through day right there. You're still kind of looking good in that one. There's LLDNW. There's another great one right there. So once again, if you wanted to be patient, wait the first 20 minutes of the day, you probably would have got this, you know, right there, right at that breakout. Now, once again, you know, this one is, you know, and to me, I, I, I'd like to see at least about a three or four month breakout, but when it's associated with huge volume, sometimes I have conviction that this thing is gonna make it to this level. And of course, after uh, two days or three days, this thing finally did make it to that level. But I can see where somebody might pass on something like this because there is some congestion, you know, uh, up here, even though it's a, a point higher. But uh, nonetheless, there's some follow through in that one right there. So I I could show you more. OK, this is just I can show you the ones from two days. I could go to Wednesday. I could show you these over and over. And what I'm trying to the point I'm trying to make as guys is don't feel like you have to get in here and bang you know find these winners i know a lot of people right now not a lot of people who are new to the market that are having fun in these biotechs i can promise you it's going to come to a real ugly ending i've seen it i've seen it over and over for 20 years uh when it no longer works and people don't know what else to do and they keep trying to go back to biotechs and they crush and they, they blow up I, and so i'm trying to show you a style where i think more traders could benefit uh, now, if you don't have an, any extra income and you only have fifteen, twenty thousand dollars, 
it's going to be tough. I'm not going to lie to you. You know, uh, it's going to be tough for anybody doing that. But if you, you know, if you have some extra income or you have a nice little savings built up or something like that, and you have X amount of dollars you can throw at the market, but you don't know if you want to just come in and, and try day trading, this can be a really, really lucrative uh, way to trade. Okay, when you're looking for these setups that are breaking out, and it once again, all it is is risk management. Okay, you're going to try some. I mean, obviously, not all of them are going to do like the ones I just showed you. Some of them are going to fail. Okay, that's where your risk management come in. When they fail, you all have a stop when you go into it and you adhere to it. It's all about cutting your winners and letting your winners. I'm sorry, cutting your winners, cutting your losers and letting your winners run. And once you get to doing that, you, you can find that you can make some really good money, even with a small account, by buying these trades. And let's let's use I know for example. Okay, let's say you're, let's say you buy 300 shares of I know right here. Just say at the breakout. Let's say you get, uh, even if it's at 20, or let's say 19. All right, and then you write it up, and then you bang out half for, you know, 150 for a five dollar profit. Okay, now great. I'm, we're just talking about 300 shares here, so which is not much capital at all being used. And so you're looking at uh, what did I say? Five points on three. That's $1,500 on half. Okay, on half of your trade. And now you let it run the next day. Maybe you get out today. I wouldn't blame anybody if they got out uh, today. A huge three-day move. So let's say you made 10 points on the uh, on the uh, the next half. Okay. There's another. What is that? So I said half would have been five times 150. No, I lied. That's 750, and then 1500. So it's basically about 2300 dollars just on uh, just on a 300 times whatever that is investment. 300 times 19. So is that 300? Is that six thousand dollar? That's a pretty good return. Uh, so and obviously you're not always they're not always going to be like this for sure, but there will be some. And um, uh, I just want you to know that, uh, yeah, there's there's other ways to, and this is kind of what we're doing right now in a fun live, Steve, I, me, and Jamie, and uh, uh, Michael, and we're doing really well. As a matter of fact, what we've done since the first of the year is is just incredible. I can't remember the percentage, but uh, uh, I want to say it's like 98% or something like that. On the, we're up. It's close to 100, yeah. Yeah, it's close to 100%, yeah. All right, guys, and and that's the style we're doing. So what I'm saying is, you don't feel. I mean, if you think you can, you know, take a day trading account and and make 100%, uh, and and I've done it over, you know, you know, over a year, a few times, but uh, to be able to do it in swing trading, it, it's it, it can be done, and uh, it just and it's a lot less stressful. You're not sitting here watching every tick. You're putting a trade in, you're setting your stop, and you're not even looking at it. All right, let me see if I missed anything. They're coming through fast. Yes, they are. I'm just <laughs> fetching links as fast as I can here. I know. I'll go ahead and fetch links. I'll let's see. Just to remind any traders with accounts under. Yes, that's right. For accounts under 25k, you're uh, you're not going to be able to day trade anyway, uh, unless you have an offshore account. So Andy, real quick here, um, people are requesting that you drop those cloud links for those windows into the chat. Okay. Well, I, I'll do that, but I'm going to show you right now. You can grab these. Just or go the to ball. your trader's yes. ball. But mm -hmm. just in case, you know what? It's on the web version too. You have access to it on the web version. Okay? So go to trader's ball, and you're going to find both of these, Extreme Volume High Low Pro and Extreme Master Blaster. Okay? Uh, this was a beautiful, beautiful one today. This pays. Look at this. And I got mad at myself because it was coming up to this level right here, and I said, "Wow, I want to buy this on a pullback because I the, the volume it was doing today. Look at that relative volume. I told, I told, so I set me an alert to buy it on a pullback, and my alert never did go off. And of course, I got to be, I'm working too, you know, some for trade ideas, so I can't sit here and watch the market all day. But I, yeah, I missed it, and I was really upset. Uh, Yes, Extreme Master Blaster is on that too. It's on the, just go to the pull up a, a channel bar and go to uh, Trader's Vault and you will find it. Uh, yeah, William, uh, you should come to, come in the morning. Yeah, somebody, Jamie hit you up. 
or send an uh, uh, email to info at trade-ideas.com. Uh, one of the texts can, can kind of help you get in there. Uh, all right, looks like uh, looks like we're all caught up. How many different kinds scan can you do? I'm not sure what you're saying there. Uh, well, a lot. Yeah, I'll <laughs> just we'll say that a lot. You know. Yeah. Keeping in mind, we've got many, many different windows. You know, yeah. not just alert windows and top lists, but all kinds yep. of different windows. Yeah. We do, we do. Extreme Master Blaster. Basically, it's very much like what I just showed you. It's looking for stocks hitting a 10-day high and doing it on huge volume. But I have this broken down into different segments here. So I have it broken down into different strategies: two to ten dollars, over ten dollars, low float ones. Got to be careful with those. They can get you. You know, they cut both ways. Uh, extreme volume, 52-week high, and extreme volume all-time high. So great. This is a great one as well. You're going to see a lot more stuff coming through here only because of uh, the so many different strategies, whereas this one I'm looking for stocks that do a little more volume, average daily volume. They got to be not only breaking out of a 10-day high, they got to be close to breaking out of a 20-day high. Uh, or they can be at all-time highs. I don't care. I just don't want them in the middle of a sloppy range. Rad was a good one today too that I didn't get only because, uh, yeah, I didn't like this level right here, but it had a nice run today. Uh, uh, yeah, we have a lot of videos on our on our YouTube page. I'm gonna send you. Uh, I'm gonna bring Scott on, and when I do, I'll send him uh, Andy. I'll send you a link in there to our uh, just our starting from scratch video and that'll also take you to our YouTube page where we have tons and tons of stuff on our playlist there's so much you can learn in there uh, no 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 the premium is not you can have a standard subscription you get full access to all alerts and scan configs you just need premium for the AI and for unlimited back testing All right, man, lots of questions, lots of good questions today. That's uh, that's exciting. All right, I'm going to bring Scott in, guys. Uh, I'll get that uh, starting from scratch for Andy there. And Scott, you want to come in and walk us out? Sounds good. Yeah, a couple things on the way out. Uh, we do have a daily trading session, a training session, a question and answer session, I should say. You should join us. It's free. It's on our YouTube channel. You can find it by bookmarking trade-ideas.com slash live so direct directly to the youtube page where it is live daily at 12 p.m eastern there's an ebook that you all should download it's got uh, some great advice on how to use earnings seasons to your advantage just go to trade-ideas.com slash earnings it's also has some links that you can add to your layout some cloud links so you can add that uh, we've got a podcast. We're going to have a new one out tomorrow. Sean McLaughlin did an interview, so get ready for that to pop into your feed by searching for Trade Ideas Podcast and adding that as a subscription. Should be an interesting one. I've got a code that's good till the end of the month, so think about using it to start off your subscription or doing an upgrade. Holly June is the code. It saves 15% off your first installment, so don't miss out on that. Jamie is at QuantBot. On Twitter, our Steve Gomez is at Today Trader. We've also got at Trade Ideas, of course. And Trade Ideas Pro is the Facebook handle to follow and share everything with your friends. Uh, info at trade-ideas.com is the best place to send any questions at all. It goes into our help software so that it doesn't get lost and gets routed to the appropriate team member. So info at Trade Ideas for all your questions. Thanks everyone. The recording will be up later on tonight and tomorrow you'll get an email from GoToWebinar with a link to the playlist where it will be the newest one on the playlist. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Jamie. Thanks everyone. Have a good one. Thank you, Scott. Uh, Andy, I'm sorry, but uh, I had my uh, uh, sharing the desktop for Scott to walk us out, but uh, just send, uh, uh, send the info at trade-ideas.com and I'll get you that uh, video. Have a great day, everybody.